Welcome to another lesson of Modern DevTools. All right, in this lesson, I want to show you a kind of quick workflow that you can adopt using what is arguably my favorite feature in DevTools. Um, it's called Local Overrides, and I'm just going to get straight into it, okay? And we're going to use Soylent.com regardless of what you think of this particular product and the idea of not eating and just consuming these drinks. We'll put all of that aside for a second and we'll focus on the website only. All right, I'm going to open up DevTools, got the network panel selected. Perfect, and I'm going to reload the page, and I want you to focus on this headline text right here. Okay, so I hit reload, and do you see how, like, for a split second, it wasn't appearing, but there were other components of the page that were? That was kind of weird, but it's not practical for me to say, hey, like, stare at this part of the page. That is happening way too quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit capture screenshots, and that should alleviate that problem. In fact, let me zoom into DevTools for you there. Capture screenshots, reload the page, and what we should get is a nice film strip view of exactly how the page was loaded. Ah, and this is perfect because it's captured the exact thing I wanted to show you. And the thing I want to show you is this. This screenshot highlights something pretty damn interesting if you ask me. The thing it highlights is the fact that other text was able to load, yet the headline text wasn't. And just for our sanity, let's copy that text and check if it's present in the source code. If it is, that suggests the browser is fully capable of displaying it. Right, see that it's in this h1 tag? So the browser, in theory, could have displayed it at this point. However, it's as if it chose not to, right? It's as if it made an intentional decision based on some logic within the browser um, not to display that headline text. OK, now you can probably guess exactly what's happening. We go on over to the Elements panel and check if any fonts are being used. So I'll inspect that headline text. Sorry, any web fonts in particular, rather than just fonts. And I'll type in font family. And there we go. Okay, I'm assuming you don't recognize this font, Apersu, neither do I. Um, but we probably do recognize Arial and Sans Serif as fallback fonts. Okay, and that confirms our suspicions. A web font is being used, and probably at this point, where is it? At this point in the screenshot, the web font wasn't available. I can understand the potentially jarring experience a user might get if suddenly the browser switches from the fallback font to the web font. Users on slow connection can very easily see this state. And it kind of looks a little weird because your eyes don't navigate to anything in particular. It kind of, I don't know, maybe the order now button, but seeing now with more flavor kind of gives you a hint that this is something that you as a human being can consume. And yeah, it gives you a bit more indication as to what this page actually is. Whereas seeing this kind of generic text, you end up not reading anything, at least while the page is loading. So the, anyway, the thing I want to show you is there is a potential way of fixing this. And the way to potentially fix this is using this magical font display property. So I'm going to search for font display CSS and we'll land on this MDN documentation, Mozilla Developer Network. And let's see if they've got an example they have. OK, so as you can see, you need to find a font face block. And where you are using a custom web font, you simply add font display um, and then you add the appropriate CSS property value. Now, in this case, the one I want to focus on is swap. Here's what it does. When you specify font display swap in a font face block in your CSS file, you are instructing the browser to not block, which is great for the user, right? They will see text immediately. And what you also say, what is meant by infinite swap period, is you say, do you know what? If the web font downloads three seconds later or 30 seconds later, you can feel free to swap the font. Swap the fallback font for the web font that you just downloaded. OK, so now I want to try that. I'm going to inspect that headline text again, because we want to remember what that font being used was. So it's a Persu. OK. Now, what would be great is if we can add that font display swap in the CSS file. So I'm just going to Command click straight here. And that takes me to the CSS file. OK. I'm going to pretty print that and do a little search for a Persu. And if I hit enter, I get taken to the second match, which is indeed the font face blocks that we were looking for. You probably know this, but just to clarify, I can make changes, right? And I see those in real time. However, this font, whoops, this font, what is it? Font display swap. This particular CSS property is kind of unique in CSS because to witness the results or the consequences of that CSS property, you need to reload the page. OK, now what's going to happen if I reload the page? Well, I'll lose my changes, as you can see right here. 
the text is not read anymore. I'm going to pre-print again, and now I'm going to show you something different. If I hit these two dots, I'll go to Overrides, and I'm going to select Enable Local Overrides. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a Pursu in the in the Styles pane, just so I can locate the CSS file where that's contained within. There we go. And I'll do a search for, not font display swap, because we haven't added that yet. I'll do a search for a Pursu. And the second match, there it is. Perfect. And here is exactly where we want to add it. Well, in fact, within each one of these font based blocks. Um, in case you're wondering why there are multiple, it's just because they've each got these slight font variations with the font weight. Anyway, right click, save for overrides. Now, this works because I've got enable local overrides checked. Okay. You wouldn't be able to save for overrides if you didn't have that checked. So make sure you have that checked. Okay, now here's where the magic comes in. Check this out. If I, um, let's see, we'll do like a silly experiment. If I paragraph color red, okay, hit save and reload the page. Is it red? Yes. After a page reload, this persists. And this is why um, local overrides is probably my favorite feature. I mean, it's just incredibly powerful and it's something that many users have desired for a long time. So we finally have it. <laughs> All right, we'll get rid of that color red, of course. That was just a test. Here's what we want to do now. Um, I'm going to Command D because there are multiple occurrences, just so I get multi-cursor selection, and I'm going to paste in font display swap, OK? We're doing this temporarily, of course. And by temporarily, I just mean we're doing it on our machine. This is a production website, but the point is we can still preview our changes um, and yeah, so I'll right click, or oh, in fact, not save as I'm going to command S to save and control S on Windows, I assume. And we'll head on over to, let's see, let's go to the network panel. Okay, and we're going to rerun that same experiment that we previously did and capture the film strip. So command R to reload the page. Now we know this is working if the headline text displays immediately, and it seems it does. But how do we know if this is truly working? Well, font display swap does seem to be kicking in because here's the swap. Do you see that? I'm going from screenshot 1.98 seconds to screenshot 2.07 seconds, and you can see a swap. Now, just to like really demonstrate that this is working, and because that's way too subtle, all right? Uh, let's find a Pursu, in fact, that was near the top. Okay, here we've got a Pursu. Now we know the fallback font is Arial, and to me that looks incredibly similar to our Pursu, which actually makes a great use case for using font display swap. But anyway, I'm going to change that to Comic Sans MS, everyone's favorite font. And back to the network panel, clear, Command R. There you go. Did you see that? Like even without the screenshots, um, I saw that. So Comic Sans MS font display has indeed kicked in. We'll cycle with the right arrow key and navigate through the screenshot film strip view. And there we go. There's the swap. And there's font display kicking in. OK, now how cool is that? We were able to preview this kind of interesting CSS property that you can only really witness the consequences of on a page reload. And we were able to do that relatively quickly. I mean, I'm kind of demonstrating this and being a bit longer, but you could probably have accomplished that yourself in a few minutes. So I would say that's pretty cool. Um, back to the sources panel. Let me drag that over here. Don't forget, you can drag panels in DevTools now. Okay. And just to clarify what we did, I can undo that Comic Sans MS. Um, so just to clarify what we did, we witnessed that, that there was a potential performance improvement we could make on Soylent.com. Now, for many things, you have the ability to live edit code, and without a page reload, you can witness the changes. However, um, font display swap is a little unique in that you can only witness the consequences of the CSS property on a page reload. And of course, as you might have known in the past, if you edit code in DevTools, like in the CSS, DevTools will not persist your changes, which is a real shame. Um, there wasn't really a good way of getting that working. However, if you come on over to the sidebar, the left-hand sidebar in the sources panel, right, you probably will have network enabled by default. So you just hit these arrows. Head on over to overrides right here, right? And as long as enable local overrides is checked, all you, all you have to do is right click and go save for overrides. I've already done that, so I don't get the option, right? And DevTools will actually save a version of that remote CSS file onto your file system, which is right here. 
And what DevTools will do is when you reload the page, it'll actually link to that local CSS file of yours. And in fact, just to see another way of demonstrating this, so this is main.css, I am going to hide screenshots and do a search for main.css. Oh, there it is. Okay, now if we look at the response, this is in theory the raw response of the network request. Okay, so font display swap, there it is. So even in the network panel, we can see that the resource that has actually been um, requested and received was our local resource and DevTools automatically sorted out that mapping for us. And so the primary takeaway of this lesson is the fact that you know this uh, local overrides feature does exist, but a little secondary thing to note is the fact that font display swap is um, pretty awesome, if you ask me. I mean, it's really great. You saw how subtle the swap from Arial to the web font Apersu was. And in my opinion, you can add that in really safely. Um, it doesn't matter um, if a browser doesn't support it. It really doesn't matter too much. You're still improving the experience for browsers who do support it. OK, and that's the end of the recap. And that's also the end of the lesson. And hopefully you enjoyed seeing a kind of practical workflow along with that feature, rather than just me saying, hey, here's a button that you can click, end of lesson. Um, if you did enjoy it, let me know in the comments of this video. I'd love to make some more videos like this, um, which are sort of catered around workflows. And I will catch you later. See ya.